Entitled mom and son demands $29,000 from my dad. What should I do? And this is OKOP Show, where we read the craziest true stories on earth. I'm John and Riley. What should they do? If you want them to like stop talking and they're just being very annoying, just give mm. them the money. Pay them off. Pay them off. Pay them off. You, you hush sign money. this check. Literally, hush money. I sign this $29,000 check. You shut the hell up and get out of here. I should not never hear you again. I should never hear from you again. Honestly, depending on how annoying they are, which I'm going to guess is insanely annoying, it just might be worth it. It's just really how bad you want them to shut up. How bad? Is it $29,000 bad? Hush money's legal. Donald Trump does it. <laughs> that is true. Good God. Good God, that is true. Um, and this one comes from Sir Delia. Ooh. And they say, okay, so I followed the subreddit for a long time now. And I've enjoyed listening to Reddit stories over on YouTube. Uh -huh, there we go. So I feel it's time I shared one of my own stories. And this is going to be long, so please bear with me. OP, we got you. We're back. All right. uh, I'll begin by saying that I, 25 male, come from a very well-known West African country. And I come from one of the three major ethnic groups in my country. My country has a lot of oil. And my father, 64 male, is an engineer and worked for a very big oil company here before he retired a few years ago. He's the second of three children and due to his job salary and position within the company he became the entire family's breadwinner mm. and i'm guessing they mean that in the context of like not just like his wife and his kids but like his brothers and yeah. parents and things of that nature his elder brother had seven children with his wife and his younger brother had two children with his late wife and my father trained each and every one of them. Trying to do what? Be an engineer? Bro, to live life right, dude. Granddaddy giving That's them lessons. That's crazy. Granddaddy giving them lessons. He sent them all to school through their nursery to primary and secondary schools. Uh, and when they all graduated from high school, he gave each of them the option of either going to a higher institution like college or university, I believe or helping them start a startup business of their own. Whoa. Yo, this is dope. Father of the decade This right is dope. Here. So he's literally taking like potentially like what, 50, 10, 15, somewhere in that kids. Yeah. And he's like, and also I'm, it seems like he's like paying for private school. Yeah. You know, like nursery, primary, secondary, all that. And then after they get out of all that private schooling, he's like, yo, do you want to start a business? And I'll help you, you know, fund that. Or do you want me to pay for your college? Dad is breaded. That's Dad is breaded. Crazy. This is crazy. This is awesome. I love. I love this. Yeah, this is this is fire. Every Christmas, we'd travel to the village, and he would buy fifty kilogram bags of rice, bags of beans, tons of groceries, uh, specialty dried fishes, and so much more that he would distribute to the entire family. So that kind of confirms it was the whole family. Yeah, aunts, uncles, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. He catered for his siblings, cousins, old friends in the village, as well as their respective families so much. And it sometimes offended my mother because while he took excellent care of us and she was never against him helping his siblings out, she felt he was making them overly dependent on him. I see. Yeah. Interesting. <sighs> He's doing it from the kindness of his heart. Like, Dude, he, he heart absolute heart of gold and yeah. i think like what a great way to use your insanely high i mean bro is earning some serious yeah. serious coin and what a great thing to do with it like invest back into your family and make sure everyone's everyone's set up straight i think it kind of depends on how exactly it's framed like i could see mm. if they're becoming overly dependent on him where they're like instead of me working today i'm gonna wait for uncle uncle to come through with his um with his like catering like he said like they said catering so is he just buying everyone extravagant dinners all the time but but like honestly so i'm from what we've he's just they've just described so far i think like paying for all of the schooling especially up until the end of high school yeah. ed, that's just investment in education so that's fantastic and i love that i think the problem is people is, are taking advantage of him yes and he's doing everything right yeah but like people are yeah. like oh he's doing this i'm gonna make sure to get my little thing out and the of the mom is clocking that. Yeah. And she's like, yo, you need to kind of like push the brakes a little bit because people are like, oh, you're spending a ton of money word. Let me like get that or whatever else. And, th and then maybe he's just so kind that he's like, no, nah, I'm just going to care because he can it. provide, which is because he can't because he can do it. And I'm yeah. sure it gives him joy yeah, you know, to, like, to provide for his family. Like it sounds incredible, but I don't know. Yeah, that, that's a good that's a good theory. Let's see. Um, 
So he opened up a thriving business for his elder brother's wife and stocked up her business with all the necessary wares. And he did the same for his younger brother. And yet whenever they'd have a problem, they'd choose to call him instead of solving even the most basic problems by themselves. Mm. There we go. So you start a business. Usually when you start a business, it's like, I have to figure it out. Yeah. Like you, you, the buck ends at you. You wear you all have, the hats. You wear all the hats. You have to figure it out. It looks like, you know, he has all the capital. He, I mean, probably brilliant dude, right? Who's like been so successful in his life. So they're like, yo, instead of figuring this stuff out, we can just get uh, investment money and solve our problems with the brother. And he's probably running ragged trying to earn his crazy income. And also, if you, if you uh, peep this, he retired a few years ago. He's 64. So like, Early retirement, early retirement, and he's still doing all of this yeah. for his family. This is all a preamble to show you that he really cared for his family. Uh, this involves my father's elder brother's wife that we'll call Rita. Mm -hmm. So this is the uh, sister-in-law, basically, okay. and her eldest son, who we'll call Chris. Uh, the sister-in-law, Rita, is a woman in her 50s, and, um, and, this is, and Chris is the her son. nephew, her son. Uh, the nephew, Chris, is in his mid-30s. Um, when the nephew Chris was born, his mother despised him because given our tradition and culture, she felt like his pregnancy forced her into a marriage she did not want. So she took out her frustration on him. Aww. Oh, oh, that's Dang. that's really sad, um, especially for Chris. Um, when he was 11, my mother was a newlywed and on one of her trips accompanying my dad to the village, she saw how uh, the sister-in-law Rita physically abused her son which is pretty common here under the guise of discipline, quote unquote. And out of fear for his safety, my parents asked his father to let Chris come back with them to the city so they could, in a sense, foster him on, as their own to remove him from that abusive environment. Wow. Oh gosh, that's wild. And like, yeah, once again, like, and this is obviously they have to, you know, pay for, the, for, for Chris, which is a lot, but like, even more like it's one thing to you know kind of pay for someone's childhood if you're like like very well off it's another thing to raise them under your household yeah like, dude like i'm just getting the sense that the father is just like absolute heart of gold i was barely a year old at this point chris lived with us for roughly 18 years he got a good education and when it was time to go to university he had a lot of problems gaining an admission. In my country, all the universities, both state and federal, are under an organization, and everyone takes an annual exam based on your intended course of study, and those who do the best are admitted into the institution of their choice. He had taken this exam for about six years, and each time he had fallen short and hadn't received an admission. Wow. So he literally, for six years straight, it's like taking the SATs, but like, the SATs, it seems like... ACTs whenever I went to school. That was uh -oh. a big thing. Wait. It, it changed from SAT to ACT. Oh, it flipped. A, oh. They did the flip. The pendulum. Dude, that's that's so whack because I murdered my ACTs because of like... What did you the, get? Uh, is 31? Does that sound... What the f***? You got 31? Yeah. Yeah, I think I, think I got... But that's I got crazy. like a low-ass score on my SATs. Oh and hadn't received an admission, so my dad gave him the option to continue trying or to put it on hold and learn a good trade for about a year, and after that, he'd open up a business for him, and maybe he could try to get into university later on if he still wanted to. I'm sorry, I have to pause right here. This is gold standard parenting right here. Gold standard parenting. Not everyone is good at school. Get him to learn a trade, he will probably like instantly make the equivalent of like 60 to 70 K uh, USD blue, blue collar episode this day. Yeah, and yeah. He chose the latter option, which was to learn the trade and start the business. Um, and he was sent off to another city to stay with a family friend who taught him all he needed to know about the given business for free. And after a year, he returned back home. So genius. I love it. Wow. Um, my father gave him what is equivalent to $12,000 to begin a business. Whoa, okay. I was talking to someone from Africa, yep. and he said you would be very well off if you just had 10 k in certain African countries. Yeah, Naima, uh, my girlfriend is from Sudan, and yeah, if you have like $12,000, you'll, you'll do well. And OP says, over here, 
$12,000 is a very, very big chunk of money, especially with the low cost of living here compared to Western counterparts. And yo, they got some fi fire like apartment. You want to talk about like being a digital nomad? Dude, Africa is lit. And also, especially how lax our tax laws are here. Uh, my dad offered him a check for that amount and he refused saying how small the money was. Interesting. Interesting. My dad had already found a really good space for him to run his business and had paid and rented it out for two years as well as paying his water and electric bills. Could you imagine someone pays for the rent for two years and paid all the, uh, the utilities like upfront? You have literally a two year runway in this space before you have to like pack it up. That's correct. The off rip. The $12,000 was initial capital for him to stock up on his wares without having to worry about rent or any other critical expenses for two years at least. So basically, it's a correct me if I'm wrong, big protein. It sounds like the uh, the dad paid for the like basically the office space for two years and gave him the 12K capital. Yeah. On top of that. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is a very significant amount where they're at right That's now. That's crazy. So we basically gave him just 12K. Yeah, yeah. This and is probably one to, to two work. years of runway. Like, Whoa. you know, maybe like independent, you know, yeah. more like solo, but like, yeah. John, red flag or green flag? He says that he is a walking red flag or is in his red flag era. Dude, you know what? <laughs> I heard some people that are named rhymes with producer Miley that they're, <laughs> that they're in a similar era. So, you know what? I'm going to say green flag because we love those people who are so honest. We love a self-aware king. And you know what? We want you to be aware. Aware of what <laughs> our new red flag green flag drop over at okop.show slash shop that is right you can enter your red flag era or green flag by purchasing one of 50 hats hoodies or overalls that we have as part of this merch drop that ends february 9th and what's great is if you decide to support the drop you actually will be entered to be featured on the show and maybe even interviewed on the show that's right so be a green flag and support your boys by going to okop.show slash shop and grabbing your merch before it runs out or before february 9th he could afford to take on the expenses on his own because he probably would have quite a bit of money in that time and even if he did have difficulties, knowing my dad, he would have jumped in to help. However, Chris rejected the money, saying how small it was, and he was expecting at least 17 grand. Buddy, what? 17, this man is like setting you up for success. He's got you a nice spot. He gave you money. You got rent for two years. Like, although the space my dad had rented for him was in a prime location, it was too small for him and that he had found a much bigger space a few blocks away. And he had expected my dad to pay for that as well. Yeah, he might think about it once your business starts booming, my dude. Just get the business to the point where it's popping off. So like you, you literally said it's in a prime location. Like this is like us getting a office in Santa Monica. It's like us renting a house in Santa Monica and building a whole studio in it. What are yeah. the odds of that? That's crazy. Start small. <laughs> Start small, baby. He said he had big ideas and didn't want my dad to repress his ideas. Oh. So he needed the appropriate support. Oh, come on, bro. My mother just about lost her head hearing this and chastised him about how ungrateful he was being. She asked him how many people were willing to do things that my dad had done for him. She asked him why he couldn't use the funds as initial capital and began his business uh, to strive to make it successful so that he could afford to move into the bigger space after the two year lease was up. He got upset and called his mother with whom the relations had improved significantly over the years, and she tore my dad a new one. So remember, this is the mom that they mm. like kind of rescued him from low key, uh, but I guess they're doing better now. She screamed in our native language about how after the stress he must have been under by not getting into the university, the least you can do is to make sure this dream of his is nurtured fully. Why are you being an Akanshi, which means stingy? Okay, so why are you being stingy? Why are you not giving me more? You have the money, so just do as he asks in the way he asks. Whoa. If you died today, would they bury you with your money? You are not setting a good example as an uncle. Uh, Tufiakwa. <laughs> I'm, I'm going for it, y'all. Tufiakwa, which basically means God forbid. My father did not respond and promptly ended the call. That is crazy. That is crazy. Like, uh, you should give the money. You, you're going to die someday. You can't take it with you. Are you kidding me? Bro what? has done the Lord's work already. Le the Lord's work. The Lord's work. Later on, his dad, my father's brother, called him 
And I don't know what was said after that, but he came and picked up the check where he'd previously dropped it and muttered a half-assed thank you before leaving. My dad also received a call from his brother apologizing for his behavior. Fast forward two and a half years, and now we're in 2016. I was around 18 or 19, and my immediate younger sister, 12 female, was now in secondary school, and my other siblings were also in primary school. So the financial burden on my dad was quite a lot at this time, so he called Chris and had a talk with him. This was sometime in October, and my dad said that since Chris's business was going well, but that perhaps it was time for him to move out from our home, maybe by the new year, so that way the financial constraints could be alleviated a bit. Now, mind you, Chris had lived with us for 18 years since I was barely a year old, and he was 11 to 12 years old at that time. I was 18, 19 years old, so he now is 29 or 30 years old. So bro is like basically 30, and he has a successful business that he got two years of, of rent wow. and capital from, from the dad. And the dad's like, yo, could you like, where it's getting a little tighter with money, could you move out and that'll help ease, ease our living costs? He never paid for rent one day or paid for utilities. My dad always did that. He never bought his own food or groceries either. My dad did this for the almost two decades that he lived with us. When my dad asked him to move out, he said nothing and like before, call his mother. So what do you get? Call your mommy every time? Bro's to get, 30. Dude. Call his mom. Come on. And he probably, like his dad's, the dad's house is probably lit, like catering all kinds of crazy stuff like they were saying. So he doesn't, he doesn't want to move out. He's like, nah, this is lit. Ain't it's free. I'm chilling. I have no idea what was said, but she called my dad in a fury that evening, screaming her head off about how my dad had never really cared about her son's success and brought up the $12,000 incident from a few years earlier. She said something along the lines of, you want him to leave your house while your wife's sister is still living with you. This is how little you care about your brother and his family. I guess his sister-in-law, you know, his wife's sister is living in the house too. And she's That's like, well, what about your blood? Yeah. You know what I mean, what about your family related by blood? My son doesn't need you or your charity. Uh, it low key sounds like he at least wants it. My God, my God will help him to survive with or without you. And so on the wife's sister she referred to was a young niece of my mom's who had lost her parents due to militant actions in one of our cities. And she was barely 15 at the time. Oh. That is, that is disgusting. After that call, he packed his things and was gone in a few weeks. This was 2016, and I haven't seen or heard from him since then. Wow. They view my dad as a bad person for not giving him the amount of money he wanted and for asking him, a 30-year-old man with a thriving business, to move out. This is nothing in the grand scheme of things. There are more cases of entitlement in my family, and it's really baffling okay oh. wow we're gonna take a quick we have uh the title of the next part is entitlement galore part two there's more um but dude i mean can you imagine like you you bring in this kid who had you know physical abuse from his mom yeah. bring him in you pay for his private school all the way through you i mean again like i'm sorry dad has a heart of gold like yeah i don't, I don't care that we're assuming anymore i know he's a good guy um, so you have, you know, a great father figure, great parents, you know, whatever great home, you know, you get all the chances in the world, dude, imagine paying for six years of schooling, dude, six years of university. And then it's like, all right, that didn't work. No, don't even sweat it. I'm going to, you know, get you into a trade, hook you up with that, get you a skill that can earn you some money, then pay for rent for two years on your office and give you, you know, good, a good chunk of money for startup capital. Why are and, you not grateful? Dude, like you have no excuse, man. Why? Uh, Why? Uh, it doesn't make any sense. It, it really doesn't. And I feel like the mother, the entitled mother is really skewing his view of the dad. Riley, I need you to pull out the tinfoil hat because we got a tinfoil hat conspiracy. Okay. Um, well, what do you got? What do you got? This one's not not too crazy. I feel like it's pretty realistic. But okay. I feel like Chris's mom is jealous because the dad like jealous and like in envious of the dad because the dad brought 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 in chris clearly provided him in a fantastic childhood and like all these opportunities and the mom is like i don't want you to like 
love him like the golden parent. I want you to love me like the golden parent and see him as, you know, the evil, you know, the bad guy. So she's like influencing him to your point of like, why isn't he 12K? Why only 12K? Does he not yeah. love you? Does he not love you? Does he not even care about you? Like I could totally see that happening and her basically spinning this tale and kind of coercing and convincing him to go against the dad. And, you know, maybe, maybe Chris still seeks his mom's approval because it's like, you know, from, from that traumatic experience of a child is like, Oh, if I could just, you know, have been right, quote unquote, or yeah. whatever, whatever, whatever the case, whatever the exact situation is like still kind of seeking his mom's approval and letting, and, you know, listening to her words and kind of getting brainwashed by her. Dude. Yeah, no, that is spot on. That's a really good, really good conspiracy. I like that. Dude, like, I'm on board. I'm we're on board professionals on this podcast. We are completely unprofessional professionals, but y'all, we got to get into en entitlement galore part two. Dude, what I'm a, ready. I'm ready to see what the chaos what is. What a part name for this update. So I reposted one of my oldest stories yesterday. This is a continuation for this story. There's three main people to consider entitled mother, entitled son, and my dad. As I stated in my previous post, my dad went through a really difficult financial crisis a few years ago, beginning in 2016. He had invested heavily in the real estate market at that time, and the market was doing horribly, so it did affect his finances to a great extent. Let me introduce Entitled Mom and Entitled Son. Entitled Mom is my dad's cousin and is in her 60s. Uh, she has six children with her late husband, all within the range of the late 20s to early 50s. Wait, six children in the range of the late 20s it's like basically like almost 30 to early 50s. So you were having kids, six children over. Span of 40 years, 30 years. 20, 20, because it's like 30 to 50, roughly. Wow. 30 to 50, roughly. But a little bit more, like over, over 20 years. I mean, that's, that's, I mean, you got to be going from 20 to 40, like going crazy. Wow. Or like maybe 18 to 40 or whatever. My goodness gracious. Well, uh, her. <laughs> Good gravy. Uh, her son, whom this story re revolves around, is in his early 40s now. In 2009, Entitled Son lived in the village with Entitled Mom, where he ran a fairly successful pineapple farm business. Oh, that's what he was doing? Pineapples, dude. Dice pineapple. Dice pineapples. Okay, uh, okay raps, by the way, y'all. Uh, yep. We're dropping new shows. Riley just referenced um, one. Okay, okay raps. It could be out. It could be out by the time yeah. you're doing this. Check it out. And then there were allegations levied against him by the family of the deceased that he had killed their relative. Oh my God. The police were involved and they found no incriminating evidence. So like most things in my country, the case went unsolved. However, the deceased's family were angry and sorted to take justice into their own hands. They planned to have him killed and this frightened the entitled mother. Whoa. Oh my God. She called my dad one day in 2009 and told him what was going on and begged him to let entitled son stay and live with us in the city far away from the village because she feared that if he remained in the village that he would not survive. My dad, not wanting to see her lose her child, agreed to help him. And so entitled son arrived at our home in early 2009. He was in his early 30s at this point. So, and again, for clarity, this is a whole new mom and son okay. in the family. Gotcha, it's gotcha. looking like. Upon arriving, he got a job at a bar and grill fast food restaurant where he worked at for about a year or two before my dad helped him get a decent job at an insurance firm. Once again, dad totally hooking up, hooking it up with a fantastic career, right? Uh, he had an entire room and a bathroom all to himself and never paid rent or utilities. Yo, they're living in a compound. They have they to. Have, dude, he never paid for his own food or bought his own groceries. Whenever an appliance broke at home, my dad would replace it and entitled son would take the broken one. Okay, so kind of like a hand me down. From flat screen TVs, refrigerators, beds, mattresses, etc., my dad let him take them all. He had them fixed and gave them to his sisters who had just moved into our city. My dad took care of him and his needs as though he was his own child. Wow. My mom wasn't exactly thrilled about him moving in with us in the beginning because it was so sudden. But given the life or death nature of the situation, she accepted it. When my dad retired a few years later and got his gratuity, he assisted most of our extended family financially. And in that spirit, he gave the entitled son a check for what amounts to roughly $6,000 to help him out. And he was really thankful because he said he'd never been gifted such an amount of money before. And he didn't think people were that generous. But 
remember, his name in the story isn't Son. It's, it's entitled, entitled son. son. So we gotta we gotta what be ready. What is he what is he getting entitled about? We gotta be ready for uh he's gonna live up to his name, apparently. We lived in relative bliss until 2016 when my dad's financial issues began. Around the period of that time, we did struggle a lot. Most days there was no food at home. Oh my goodness. Wow. I mean, that that is a complete switch from where he was. And to assist his credit, entitled son used part of his savings to assist the family back then, but it was never free. I wonder if that means like, hey, now I'm earning, I'm making a living. I'll pass you, you know, a thousand bucks. Pay me back like yeah, 12, something like something like that, maybe. However, it didn't really matter because in that moment, without that assistance, we probably would have starved. He would buy food items and groceries and also lend my dad some money. All these expenses were repaid every few weeks. Okay, there you go. So okay. yeah, it was repaid. When my dad received some money because the assistance received from entitled sons were loans and you always pay your debts. And secondly, my dad didn't expect entitled son who was struggling and figuring things out to cater for the family. Things generally continue this way until 2018 when there was a resurgence in the real estate market in my country. My dad was finally able to sell both properties for around the low six figures each. Keep in mind, we said that 12 grand was like big. Mm -hmm. We said that 12 grand was big. That influx of cash pushed us out of the red and into a more comfortable position. After that sale, my dad's first major purchase was a car because we'd sold both of our cars during those difficult years. There weren't a lot of people who came to our aid during that period. So as a way to show gratitude, my dad gave the entitled son a check for about five to $6,000. Now this is where the entitlement began because I think this is the, we had check number one of 6K pre-market real estate market crash. And then this is another five or six gotcha. after he got his comeuppance um, when he sold those properties. Entitled son knew how much both properties sold for. So shortly after my dad bought the car, Entitled Son came to him with an itemized list informing, informing my dad that he had decided to go back into the agricultural sector. He wanted to start another pineapple farm, but not just pineapples. He also wanted to grow oranges as well. As a male child, he had inherited some plots of land in the village after his father passed away. He planned on using that land for the business. Nothing crazy so far. By this time, it's been almost a decade since he had fled from the village and most of the pressure and threats had died down, so he felt safe returning. And besides, he wasn't actually going to live there seeing as he still had a job in the city. He simply wanted to set it up and have his mother run it for him. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. What, do you, what do you call that? Passive income? Passive income, baby. Yeah. That's right. Let's go. Um, he had already discussed his plans with his mother, and she was excited about the idea. And then he handed my dad a list of everything he needed to pull this off. And he needed an initial capital of what amounts to be roughly $29,400 from my dad to begin. Once again, reminding you all, we had 12K was a significant amount. My dad was stunned. He asked him if he realized how much he was asking for. My dad said that if he had even saved a fraction of the money by himself, then maybe he would be willing to see what he could do. But he expected my dad to pay for everything, which wasn't okay, given all four of my younger siblings were in boarding school, which was kind of expensive. And he was also making college plans for them as well. So he wasn't in a position where he could give out almost 30 grand like that. Bro is still funding all of these kids yeah. through, and not to mention like we don't know how old all the children are in the family are there any other kids that he's supporting like like we mentioned earlier this annoyed the entitled son so he asked my dad to loan him the money instead then but again my dad refused to do this because there was no guarantee to make back that money in a year from a startup business my dad offered him 10 percent, three grand which i mean totally fair of what he asked for free to try to help him out, but that wasn't good enough for him. Bro, maybe you should make a business plan and business model and present that to him. And maybe you could maybe get 15%. But L literally, like, like come present, on, dude. Present present the plan. And then I mean, like the dad said, which by the way, remember, he's all uh, already an insurance agent. Yeah. So he's probably doing great in his career. You know, a a a dad's got the minus touch. Everyone he touches turns the gold, gets a great career makes a lot of money why don't you use that to seed some of the funds 
for it. Maybe, I don't know, start playing. I don't know how pineapple oranges <laughs> work, but I, I know about oranges, though. I'm from Florida. So uh, you start it a little bit and then be like, yo, look what I did with this little money. I invested, you know, a grand. I got five grand back. Yeah. Now the dad is like, oh, you got the proof is in the pudding. If I give you five grand, 10 grand, maybe you can triple that and, you know, pay me back some interest or whatever. Like, come on. I can't forget the statement he made when my dad said no, nor can I forget his tone. He said, so you say you won't give me this money. Okay, no problem. And then he stormed out. He didn't care about my dad's reasons or my siblings' well-being. All he cared about was himself. This was on a Tuesday, mind you, and on Saturday, his mother came to our house unannounced from the village. Neither her nor entitled son had informed my parents that she was coming. The thing she said that day, she unleashed every ounce of resentment she had for him. Prior to this, he'd always looked upon her as a sister he never had and treated her as such. Because <clears throat> I believe this is the wife's sister. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had just had lunch that afternoon when entitled son went to pick her up from wherever she got dropped off. She went on a tirade and she began by telling him that what he was doing was wrong. It had been a few years, but I'll try to call her, recall her words to the best of my ability. How can you treat entitled son this way? Is this fair? You've sold properties for hundreds of thousands of dollars. So what is $29,000 to you? You've forgotten how entitled son supported you when you were struggling. You have forgotten how he spent his salary on you and your children every month and now you cannot even help him with this small thing even though you have the money. She said all of this in front of my dad, mom, me, entitled son, and my young siblings. My mom sent my siblings to their rooms because it was no atmosphere for children. I can't remember everything she said, but I do remember this part. You have also forgotten about the numerous times when I used to bathe and clean your mother. My grandmother had dementia during the later years of her life, and unlike in Western countries, the concept of housing for senior citizens isn't very popular here, so instead, the family usually takes care of them on their own. My dad viewed her as his sister, so he asked her to please look after my grandmother for him since he was in the city and she and my grandmother were both in the village. My dad visited every month and ensured that they weren't lacking for anything. He gave her monetary gifts or food items, etc., as a way to say thank you, so while she was in fact helping him, my dad did show constant financial appreciation until my grandmother passed. Through her tirade, my dad said nothing. He is extremely quiet and hates conflict, but my mom is the exact opposite. Dude, I get the sense mom, mom rides. She's a ride or die. She goes to bat. Let's go. Let's go. She doesn't take BS from anyone. Let's go. Let's do it. When she brought up my late grandmother, my mom raised her voice and began to chastise her about her behavior and began pointing out every single detail of the extent my dad had gone to help Entitled Son. Do you think your son would be alive today had my husband not agreed to let him move in with us? Oh, I mean, I mean, dude. Oh. That's... <gasps> That's, that's kind of a hammer. That's that kind of a is, nuclear. Oh, yeah. And it's true. She said this while I'm pointing at Entitled Son. <laughs> Riley's loving this. <laughs> Weren't they after his head after the allegations made against him? How many people have given you $6,000, not once, but twice free of charge? How many people would have opened their homes to someone who is suspected of murder? But my husband did it because he loves and values his family above Almost anything. Yes, Entitled Son helped us out when things were really bad. And I'm thankful, but he was repaid in full. Do you not care about him training his own children? If he gives you that money, do you not see how that would disrupt the plans he's made for his own kids? How can you both be that selfish? How dare you come into our home and raise your voice at the man who has protected, fed, and housed your son for a decade? We're not, we're not done, Riley. We're not done. What? There's more? There's more. How dare you bring his late mother into this? When you take care of her, did you receive nothing in return? Did he never provide for you financially or look after you while housing and taking care of your son as well? This shut entitled mom up. Dude. Come on, bro. Start on business. Dude, stand on business. Tell him, Riley. Golly. Tell him, Riley. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, oh it's gonna be man. fired up, dude, for real. Mo- moms, dude, this is this is this is the battle of moms. The dude, mom moms is fighting are scary. Uh oh, I thought you were gonna say another word that starts with S. Sexy. Okay. No, really like I've that. never looked at two moms <laughs> fighting and said, "Oh, this is so hot." <laughs> I've never ever thought that. And but I don't but think you I see, but you see a, a a beautiful older mature woman. Yeah. And what's going through your mind? Great, I love her. And then she's defending your honor, and you're like, "Yo, <laughs> we're this, playing around, ladies and gentlemen." It's a John and Riley solo episode. In this, you know what time it is. Environment, no. <laughs> you know what time maybe it is. Another, maybe I'm, another. I'm driver. not buying it, man. Oh my god, he's not. He's not taking the trial. bait. He's not taking the bait, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. We're we're having fun and we're making content. <laughs> All right, so uh, so much more was said, which I can't remember before my mom asked entitled mother to leave to show you just how little shame he had. Entitled son continued to live with us for a few months before eventually moving out. What? After all of that, he still continued to like stay and like mooch. My dad refused to ask him to leave because he knew Entitled Son was already making plans to leave. When all of this went down, Entitled Son was in his late 30s. So he was wow. old enough to know better. In his late 30s, has has a uh, great career as an insurance agent that the dad hooked up for him, obviously helped out, gave, gave him a ton of money over the years. I don't know if he's yet started that. Maybe he hasn't started the pineapple farm, but the d- dude is set up good. Yeah. He can move out. Same as the first first guy. Like, you are good to go, buddy. Yeah. You can move out. To this day, my dad never lets any member of my extended family visit. Not live, visit, visit. He often wonders exactly where he went wrong or what heinous crime he committed against them. And it always upsets me whenever he talks about these events because of just how much pain it still causes him. Aww. To this day. Oh, dude, that's so sad. Why is it with these people with hearts of pure freaking gold? Absolute, just the sweetest, sweetest of hearts. Why are you going after them? Get, get treated this way, man. That's so sad because I think they know, like, in a way, they can just bully him into. And and again, like, yes, he did have. It seemed like there was a two year stretch where he was like. It was looking bad financially, but like on either end of that two year stretch, he was like doing pretty good. And also, let's talk about this. If he hadn't have spent all that money on the family before the market crashed, let's say he had just saved that up, would he like I feel like he he low key kind of gave away like if he hadn't have given away all that money, would he have been totally chilling? Yeah. In that two year period from twenty sixteen to twenty eighteen. You know, it's possible he would have invested that. Too, yeah, yeah, and yeah. Kind of like lost it during that two year period, but. Hmm. <sighs> there are things, but it just that family, like, dude, they just see a guy doing super well off and they're just mooching off of him. Cause, like, honestly, he's like a millionaire. Oh, yeah. Probably multi million, multi multi millionaire. Like, like, if we're saying two, he ended up later on two properties selling for six figures. Dude, that's impressive here. That's probably getting up. Yeah, that's impressive here. Like, that's like probably t- combined like a million here. So, yeah. like a millionaire here, maybe that's like equivalent to like, relatively speaking, like 10 million or so where he's at. Potent- potentially, you know, we, we don't know exactly, but um, a few million to 10 million, something in that range, probably. So, I remember at the beginning of the story, I'm like, oh, it sounds great that he's helping his family, but the, but the mom, the mom knew. What are our takeaways here, dude? I I think the dad's been super solid. I love that he chose the right wife. The dad, like holy Dude, cow, the parents like greatest parents of greatest all time duo of the show of all time. Dude, honestly. I mean, they they really crush that. They complement each other very well. Also, op op like just the way that op speaks and writes, talks so highly uh, uh, of their parents. Yeah, seems like a great person as and well. He didn't really like bad mouth anyone. He just kind of told her how it was. Yes, he just he was very, really just like observing the unfortunate situation of how his dad was so pained after giving so much. He's just feeling for his dad who he, who, who they clearly love so much. Right. But you know, I, I, I feel for the dad, but I'm happy that he, what he did for his family. Yeah. Just beautiful. Very just beautiful. Really beautiful. And you know, Stand what? Up guy. there's probably stories of OP, the other children and other children that, that were very grateful and just like made the most of it. 
just Gotta sucks look. people abuse relationships like that that sucks um but you know what we uh what we can't abuse what's that uh these the viewers time because we are going to give you another story guys. let's I'm go trying to transition over here let's read into it <laughs> this is the last one of the day all right we're last gonna change episodes to we're gonna change clothes tomorrow yeah that's right get, get ready for, <laughs> for a fresh new set of clothes ladies and gentlemen all right um this one's a shorty but a goody Today, I effed up by sending tuition to a church, which could be fine if the church also doubles as a school. Whoa. Two for one, get your tithe in and your tuition in. It does, it, does it count double, though? I feel like I feel like they want to double dip. Because can I be honest? Can I be honest? Go for it. Went to a church growing up. Oh. Had a school on it. Okay. Charged tithe and for tuition. Tithe and tuition? Yeah, double dip. I mean... Double dip. I mean, I don't see anything wrong with that because, like, tithe is like it is two. It's the two. Like, if you want to think about it, like, okay, two this is my things. tax. The tithe is the, this is the the God tax, right? And then I'm paying for the service of the education. So they're like, nah, you ain't getting it for free. No, I think they're two different things. <gasps> there, it's God That's what tax. I'm saying. Oh, oh, oh you're saying yeah, tithe is not the God tax. Yeah, tithe tithe is the God tax. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and then. The tuition, tuition is, is paying the teachers and students that are exactly it's two yeah, separate because yeah the things. tithe goes to the church the, supporting the church the and everything and the, get the lights on the, like the, the support the church provides but then if the, so now they're trying to double dip and also fund oh. the school yeah you're right they got to get they got to get some extra change in there anyways go on yes I don't think <laughs> we got it baby let's, let's see what they're getting up to yes we have competitive toe eight two three three oh. <laughs> love that dude love some competitive piggly wigglies. Uh, they say, so a few months ago, I was dating a very religious Christian girl from Tinder. Whoa, that Whoa. is very ironic. We are talking Riley's language, ladies and gentlemen. Christian girl from Do a Tinder. sweet little Christian baddie. What are you Ooh. doing here? <laughs> we were dating for about two months, and I was seeing her often. I started spending nights at her house. There it is. That's why she's on Tinder. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so <laughs> sorry. <laughs> We cook it now, baby. Oh, this is no. the last story in the last session of the day, no. ladies and gentlemen. Oh I'm my just god! Saying if she's very religious, dude, we're getting premium Riley be, content today. She wouldn't be spending a night. This but is she is also on Tinder, but to each their own. I this understand. is fr premium Riley just, content, right this here. This is Southern Baptist boy, <laughs> from twelve years old. We're shooting from the hip. God. Um, oh, oh, it just got a hinge notification. Look at me. See exactly. God. Look at this guy. Look oh, at this man. guy. Get me out of here. One of those nights was Saturday, and she told me if I was going to be sleeping over, I'd have to come to church in the morning. Dude, two for one right Dude, there. Dude, that's that's the that that little hey, bit of you. Uh, that's the package deal. That's the package deal. Really is. We can not sweet sleep over, but morning. Dude, the amount of people I know that have done effed up on a Saturday night and then get their butts up to go to church is ungodly. We repent. Dude, pun intended. It really is. It's, it's <laughs> insane. They always be preaching, be the same through the week, but they're not. It's, <laughs> it's crazy, dude. Probably seen some things. I really have. Riley's seen I really, some I'm like, things. I'm like, buddy, what are you doing here? <laughs> it was not a big deal at the moment, as I am a Christian myself, and joked, as long as I'm not expected to fall when the pastor touched me, It'll be fine. We're talking some bodies hit the floor type type situations going on here. Church service is going well. Then fast forward, offering time comes. Uh oh, I didn't have any cash on me, and this is this is the time where you uh take that take that money out. You put it in a little tin. Dude, All right, you I pass it like on. Give it like I just pass it real quick. Same. <laughs> Oops, I didn't have cash on me at the time and was trying to be polite. I made a transfer of $5. It was now registered as a payee on my account. So I believe he's like Venmoing or Zelling or something like that. This is where I made my F up. Today, I was making a payment for my tuition. So for the past two and a half years, it's always been at the bottom of my banking app payee. So it's like you got your list of like, you know, girlfriend, you know, moms, whatever. And then, and then tuition. The, the tuition was right, was right there in the app. Out of muscle memory, I went to the bottom like I always do and simply made the payment like always. 
It was the immediate realization that I had made a mistake and I called them back to try and sort it. They are now telling me it can take several weeks to have my money returned. Bro, you're winning at that point because the fact that you can even get your money returned, period, yeah. is, is, is low-key a miracle. As they need to contact the payee's bank. It's the same bank, but just different branches. Okay, so it's still pretty up in the air, it seems. It's not like a PayPal transaction yeah. like in, in limbo. So now I got to explain the situation about why I'm going to be a little late on tuition. Upside down, smiley face. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, that's tough. Have, that's you, ever, tough. have you ever sent uh, money to the wrong person? Actually, yeah. Yeah? <laughs> Remember, <laughs> I was, the story that went in my head was whenever we had a we had a we had a payment issue. Yes, and then it <laughs> a certain amount went somewhere else. Yeah, and we tried sending a payment, and then it it, it just went somewhere it else. Evaporated. Did yeah. we ever get? Did we ever find no. that? No, I called. See, this is what happened. I called one company and told them their f up, and then right. they were like, "Call the other company." Call the other company. Told them about their f up, and then they were like, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. "And I was like, I." I know it's a significant amount, but at the time I was doing fine. I was like, F yeah. this. I'm not even going to deal yeah. with it. Yeah. Um, that was annoying. But have I, other than that, no, I have not given money to a different person. I, whoever has that money. It's, it's bro. It's the freaking banks. It's the banks. Like literally the people who need it. The absolute least, the absolute least. They probably, I don't, I don't know the, the way it works or whatever, but they probably take, there's probably so much money that was in limbo that they just take it. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah, it is crazy. But I mean, you know, can't keep, can't keep me down. Dude, Ry Riley was up. Down. Dude, right, that, was, that, was a, that was a long time ago. Now Riley's ago. Look at me now. living in LA in a mansion. <laughs> yeah. Dude, hot tub. Come on. Big kitchen. Wait, what can I say? What? what Hanging out with these fools all the Hanging time? Hanging out with Come us? On. Recording. Dude, living the Riley dream. and John People, Solo people ask me, what's your dream? And I was like, I'm living it. Low-key. Pretty much am. Um, that makes me happy. I'll be really living it once John and his five kids are running around here. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the next <laughs> that, level. That's the next dream. level of the dream. Uh, okay. Come All on, right. John. Get to work. Get to well, work. <laughs> uh, no better time to end the episode than that right there. Uh, if you love us, please make sure to subscribe. And we love you. See, See you tomorrow. tomorrow.